I'm gonna bring up Sansara Taylor. Sansara Taylor is the co-host of the Revolution Nothing Less show on YouTube. She's a follower of the revolutionary leader and architect of the new communism, Bob Bacon. She's the host and producer of We Only Want the World on WBAI and WPFW. And she is an initiator of Rise Up for Abortion Rights. And I gotta say, last week when we were in St. Patrick's Cathedral and people put their bodies on the line, she was one of the people arrested for civil disobedience. So give it up for Sarah Taylor. Sisters and brothers, beautiful people, International Women's Day 2022, you are in the right place. Let me hear you. You are in the right place because you are in the streets today, together with people rising up in 12 cities across this country and in solidarity with women rising all over the world. And we stand in these streets here today because women's rights, women's lives, are in a state of emergency. The U.S. Supreme Court is on track, packed with fascist judges, appointed by Donald Trump, is on track to obliterate, to decimate women's fundamental right to abortion their right to control their own bodies, their lives, their destinies, in a matter of months. And we have heard today what it means when women do not have the right to decide, when the state tells them that no matter what you plan with your life, no matter your dreams, no matter your conditions, no matter if you're trapped in an abusive relationship, no matter if you're trapped in poverty, doesn't matter what you want. You will be forced by the state to have a child against your will, your life foreclosed. This is female enslavement. And this is the future they have planned for us across this country if we do not stop them, if we do not rise up. This is where things are headed. And I want to tell you today, sisters and brothers and beautiful people, that it is possible to stop this fascist assault on women. It is possible. But it is not possible by playing by the rules of those who rule over us. It is not possible to do this on the cheap by going along with the same political channels and norms that have gotten us into this mess. It is not possible by relying on elections where the votes of black people and women and young people and progressive people are increasingly being suppressed. It is not possible by relying on elections where the fascists have already made clear that they are willing to use violence to overturn them if they lose. It is not possible by constricting ourselves to choosing between candidates where one half of them are fascist lunatics who sometimes refer to women as host bodies and the other half are led by a president, Biden, who will not even say the word abortion. He has not said the word abortion, not once since he's been in office. We cannot win in that arena. And it should go without saying, although today it unfortunately does not, and it needs to be said, we cannot win. We cannot. The earth is shaking, all right? We're gonna, we're gonna make it. We cannot win by accepting defeat in advance. And I, we have to be honest, this is what way too much of the so-called leaders of the so-called women's movement have done already. They have accepted that Roe v. Wade will fall and abortion rights will be gone. And they are telling you all you can do is some workarounds on the edges, try to help a handful of women induce their own abortion when it becomes illegal. 
try to help a handful of women travel to other states as it becomes criminalized where they are. Or to selfishly and narrow-mindedly just try to pass a few local laws to protect abortion rights in a few local areas while accepting that abortion rights nationally will be decimated. No, we cannot do this. This will foreclose, foreclose the lives of countless women. This will squander the precious time we have. This will give momentum and accelerate the whole fascist program, not only in their assault on abortion rights in women, but in their whole program going after the rights of LGBTQ people, going after the rights of immigrants, going after black lives, going after science and the climate, going after the people of the world. All of this will be accelerated if we let them take Roe. And the other thing that will be accelerated is the dangerous and deadly dynamic we have witnessed over years of otherwise decent people learning to lie down and accept the unacceptable. No, this has to stop. We have to draw the line here, now, International Women's Day 2020. We have to say in 2022, we have to say enough is enough. Women are not incubators. They are not. Women are not property of the state. <laughs> Women are full human beings. <laughs> and we have to go to work to make that real, to make that recognized. We have to go out today and going forward, all of us here, and wake up and organize and mobilize the one force that is powerful enough to stop this fascist assault. And that is the masses of people rising up in their millions, relentlessly again and again, filling the streets with our fury, shutting down the campuses and walking out, shutting down the freeways, taking over everywhere again and again, not letting this society function and making clear to the fascists on the court and everywhere else that if they try to take this right away, if they try to slam women backwards, their society will be prevented from functioning at all. Now, a lot of people are going to tell us that the odds are against us. But first of all, who the hell calculates the odds when it comes to the lives and the humanity of half of humanity? And second of all, through what we do, we intend to change the odds. Which brings me to something very important I want everybody to take into their hearts today. We are going to have to go out and struggle with people, and challenge people, and inspire people, and organize them to join us. And here I want to share an experience from a young woman in Los Angeles a new leader in this movement. Never did anything like this before, but she is helping lead the rally in Los Angeles today. I interviewed her a few days ago on the radio, and I asked her, how does she respond to the people who tell us? Because a lot of people tell us this, and you're going to be told this. I said, what do you say to people who say, well, I support abortion rights, but I can't make it on Tuesday. I got to work, or I got this, or I got that. She said, I tell them, what I really hear you saying is, I don't really mind that much if the state takes away your fundamental rights. I don't mind that much if your body is hijacked and your future is hijacked by a fascist state. I mean, I prefer it didn't happen, but not if it requires me to change my schedule. And this was important. People need to be told this. They need to be challenged. They need to be won to their better side. And if we want an example of what can be accomplished by people who refuse to accept the unacceptable and who dare to go out and challenge others, look at the women of Colombia. Look at the women of Argentina. Look at the women in Mexico. This is why we wear this green bandana. If you do not know, those are deeply Catholic countries, very repressive states, very patriarchal. 
places where abortion has been criminalized for years, women sent to prison for miscarriages. But the women down there went in the streets, not once, but again and again, relentlessly. Sometimes a million strong, and they waved this green bandana, and they kept coming back, and they tore down those laws, and they decriminalized abortion. <laughs> Through their struggle, they made what everybody thought was impossible, possible. And again, that's why we take up this green bandana. And I want to say, we have a lot of strength in this movement. It's not big enough yet, but we have strength. We have the experience of people like Marl and Lori, who have been in this fight with me from the beginning. We have people like the young ones you saw on stage today, who are defying the culture of me first individualism and standing up for the future for everyone. We have the courage of our Sally and people like her, who stood on this stage despite years of shame and violence and brutality inflicted on her and has inspired so many more. And we, as we go out, we will find others who are like us. Millions in this country who care about the half of humanity that was born female. Millions who remember and refuse to go back to the dark days of back alley butchers. Millions among the one in four women in this country whose life and accomplishments or mere survival has hinged on access to abortion. We are going to go out and gather them. And as we do, we're going to open up the big questions about what kind of society do we live in that has put these fascist lunatics in power? Where does this desire to control women come from? And what will it take to end it once and for all? And for my part, as a follower of the revolutionary leader, Bob Avakian, who is also the architect of the new communism, I'm going to be fighting for what I understand to be true which is that all this patriarchy, all this oppression, all these centuries of patriarchal chains are rooted in this system, along with all the other forms of oppression, of capitalism and imperialism. And it cannot be ended without bringing that system down, without overthrowing it once and for all in an actual revolution. But until we do that, all this oppression will regenerate, just like the villain in one of those misogynist slasher movies that you think is dead at the end and he comes back and he comes back we have to bring this system down so if some of that resonates with you come find me and talk to me i want to build this revolution with you but i also want to say here on this stage today i want to echo what kathy said earlier a great strength of this movement is our diversity of views. We don't all agree. We come from different perspectives, but we stand shoulder to shoulder and insisting that women control their own bodies and lives. And this is a strength, too. So I want to close by letting you know the final strength we have in this movement that we should take stock in and we should make use of. And that is all of you here today. Whether you joined this movement a month ago, a few days ago, or just a few minutes ago, new people who are standing together and stepping into this struggle. All of us together have different strengths, different understandings, and we have to go out and rally more. And in a little while, after a few more awesome kick-ass speeches that you're going to want to hear, we're going to march together through the crowded streets of New York City, and we're going to start right here today calling on more people to join us. And then after today, we're going to fan out to our classmates, our co-workers, our people in our buildings, the strangers on the street, everybody we can reach, and we are going to call on them to join us March 19th. Next Saturday, in a mass organizing meeting, you need to be there. March 19th. Say it. March 19th. You need to mark your calendars and bring everybody, because we're going to organize to bring more people out. April 8th, we're going to spread this green bandana into the workplaces, hospitals, schools, everywhere. It'll be a day of green. And April 9th, April 9th, we are coming back to this park thousands strong. And across this country, thousands strong. And from there, 
We are doubling down and doing it again and again until we flood the streets and bring this society to a halt. Because they must not, they must not be allowed to shatter the lives of women and slam history backwards. It is on us. We have what we need. We start today and we go forward together to insist the Supreme Court not deny women's humanity and decimate their rights. We will win abortion on demand and without apology.